So you bought a ring light off Amazon, you set it up, turned it on, pressed record, and it just looks... Meh. Surprise, surprise, lighting isn't as straightforward as you thought it would be. To get it right for your channel, there's one question you need to be able to answer. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at different lighting setups that content creators use, most of which include a ring light. I've been a DOP for over a decade, and I've shot like a hundred music videos. In my humble, professional opinion, ring lights are a scam. There. I said it. I'm gonna explain exactly why I'm saying that, and when you see it, you can't unsee it. But don't worry, you don't have to throw out your ring light, because I can show you a better way to use it. If you're getting serious about creating content, you probably know that lighting is one of the most important elements of a good video. Why? Well, two reasons. The first one is pretty obvious. Your viewers need to be able to see you. And the second one is way more important. The way you choose to light yourself has to match who you are as a creator. So before you buy any gear, you have to be able to answer this question. What is your vibe? What is the mood and tone of your channel? Now, when I say mood and tone, it's metaphoric. I'm not talking about colors. I'm talking about feeling. What's the feeling you want to transmit to your viewers? Take me, for example. I have a lot of energy. Some people say I'm bubbly. My doctor says it's ADHD. I'm just like, oh, I'm so quirky. Oh. Being this way, it feels right to have bright and happy lighting, you know, because it just matches my vibe. If I were a gamer or something else, then I would go a totally different direction. Say you're into creating makeup tutorials. You'll want that flattering lighting that makes everything look clear and absolutely flawless without any harsh shadows. Or if you are sharing your daily adventures as a lifestyle vlogger, your vibe is probably upbeat and lively, right? And that calls for lighting that is as bright and cheerful as you are with soft natural shadows that make your videos feel super Super inviting. It's all about matching your lighting to the unique vibe that you're sending out. Notice that for a makeup content creator, I said no harsh shadows, while for a lifestyle vlogger, I said soft shadows. There's a nuance in there. That's because beauty content focuses on the details. Hard shadows can potentially influence the way these details look, while in lifestyle videos, having soft shadows help make the lighting have more of a visual impact. If you want to learn exactly what I mean by hard and soft shadows, just let me know in the comments and I will make a separate video on that just for you, Susan or Mark just wanted to freak someone out. Other content creators who benefit from a bright and cheerful content style include those running educational channels, cooking and recipe shows, and even children's programs. On the flip side, there's a whole other realm of content creators who embrace a darker, moodier vibe. And you can see this in YouTubers who do tech reviews, gear evaluations, gaming, photography, tutorials, film critique, you know, documentary style stuff. Dark and moody lighting is not just about low light. There's actually a lot of lights involved, which are used in a very strategic way to create pleasant shadows that add depth to an image. A lot of gaming channels use LED lights and different color filters, and they just make their talking head shots feel like spaceships, which totally puts you in the mind frame of a video game. And now comes the part about ring lights. As we have seen, people have different vibes and should have different lighting. And different lighting can be obtained with different types of gear. So how come so many people use a ring light? I know, I know. I actually know why. They look cool. They do. How do we know? Because we've seen them everywhere, like in music videos, TV commercials. They're kind of like part of the set in our brains. But you should know that they are rarely used to light a subject in a pro level shoot. A ring light is not a one size fits all. It was actually invented for dental photography and then was used a lot in the 90s in fashion and music videos. In today's YouTube world, there's one place where a ring light is perfect. But first, let me tell you what I don't like about ring lights. I'm gonna break it down. This is you. The angle at which you place a light determines what the viewer feels. If you place the light above your subject, you're gonna get dark shadows under the eyes, which creates a sense of mystery and foreboding. If you place it to the left or the right, you're gonna get side lighting, which is really dramatic and can be used to transmit tension. If you place it at a low angle, it casts shadows upwards, distorting facial features and creating an atmosphere of fear and tension, and is mostly used in horror movies. Lots of villains are lit this way. <laughs> So what does this have to do with a ring light? Well, when you place a ring light in front of you, what angle is the light coming from? The answer is yes. 
It's coming from everywhere. And what feeling does that transmit? Nothing. 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 Nada. Nichts. It's flat. It's flat. It's flat. Like Casey's ass? Flat. Like where I live? Flat. Like still water? Flat. Like what you did to your ex's car tire? Flat. <laughs> <sighs> so this is what I look like in front of a ring light. As you can see, there is as much light on my neck as there is on my forehead. That's because the intensity of the light shooting upwards from the lower part of the ring light is just as high as the intensity of light coming downwards from the higher part of the ring light. Now watch what happens when I increase the height of the ring light in such a way that all the light is coming from above and nothing is coming from below. Now because the light is coming from above, it casts a shadow on my neck and so my neck is darker than my face. And that is what we want because when we're shooting a talking head video, we want all the focus to go right in the center of the face. Eye contact. Notice that the light on my face is uniform and I would actually say that on my forehead there's a little bit more light than on the rest of the face. Watch what happens when I take the light off center and take it a little bit to the side. As you can see there is light on one side of my face and there is shadow on the other side of my face but there is this triangle of light. It is called Rembrandt's triangle because Rembrandt the painter that's how he did his portraits. Having the light off to the side somewhere is just more pleasing because as I talk you can see that I'm moving my face and because there's light and there's shadows, there's dimension in my face. There's a sense of 3D. I mean everything's 3D. When we move around in the world, we go from light areas to dark areas and there's shadows and there's light and it's just more human. With the ring light right in front of me as I'm talking and I'm moving, there is no play of light and shadows. Everything just remains the same and that is what I mean by flat. The one place where ring lights are perfect is makeup videos. Because when we're doing makeup, we want to create our own shadows and highlights. And so it does help to have an even canvas. What? Yes, I do makeup. I'm a drag queen. <laughs> so what can you use instead of a ring light? One word, softbox. Okay, that's two words or one. I don't know. Softbox. A softbox is basically a box that goes over any light and lets the light out through a material that is translucent. This material does three things. It reduces the intensity of the light so it's not too bright. It spreads the light so that it's more even and it diffuses the light so that the shadows created have soft edges. Let's think of the skin on your face as a texture with hills and valleys. When a hard light hits a hill, it creates a shadow of the hill. So you have the hill and the shadow of the hill. So basically, if you have a pimple, which is a hill, hard light will not only make that pimple more visible, it will also make the pimple cast a shadow. So you essentially make things worse because you have the pimple and the shadow of the pimple. If you use a softbox, however, the intensity of the light hitting the pimple is reduced and the shadow that is cast is so soft that you don't even notice it. If you understand this properly, it's gonna help you find your light in different situations. Softboxes come in a wide range of sizes and prizes. You don't have to splurge on something expensive in the beginning. I would recommend the FGen Softbox Photo Studio set just because I've used it in the past and I think they are a pretty good deal. But really, any sort of softbox should be okay. The FGen Softbox set includes two softboxes with reflective interiors and a 2.5 meter cable so you can plug it in easily. It also comes with two lamps that are 135 watts each. That is is bright enough for a talking head video. It comes with light stands and a bag where everything can just fit. So it's easy to set up and it is portable. Now I am not sponsored by this company. This is just an example. So go out there, explore and find a softbox that you like and you can afford and like fits in your room or whatever. Just it has to be a softbox. If you already have a ring light, that's fine. You can still use it as you would use any other light. Just not in front of you, but from the side. You can use it as a contour light from behind. You can use it as a top light if you can find a way to hang it up safely. And also as a background light. Or you can turn it into a softbox. I have a video on how you can do that where I also go more into detail on the different ways you can use a ring light. So check out that video and thanks for watching this one. And if you got value from this video, please like and subscribe because it helps me with the algorithm. Thanks.